Thank you, Dr. Atul. So, again, I am uh, warmly welcome our today's, today's expert, uh, Dr. Tejwan Singh Kang. And before we start our session, I would like to give a brief introduction about uh, today's uh, our guest. Uh, Dr. Tejan Singh Kang is an associate professor in the Department of Chemistry, Gunanabe University. Uh, he has a very rich credentials uh, in terms of research, uh, Chemical Research Institute, Bhavnagar, Gujarat. And then he worked as a JCTS Fellow, the renowned fellowship uh, from Japan uh, from 2018 to 19. And he was also awarded with Professor Shantilal Oswal Young Scientist Award by Indian. Thermodynamic Society for the year 2012. Uh, he has been uh, he has been a, res a visiting researcher uh, in the group of Professor Kazu Kurihara Institute of, Institute of Multidisciplinary Research for the Advanced Materials of Tohoku University, Japan, and also work as a visiting researcher in the group of Professor Nobu Kimizuka Graduate School of Engineering Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry, Kyushu University. Uh, Japan. Uh, Dr. Tejwan Singh Kang has a very rich uh, research profile. Uh, he has more than uh, 90 research publications with high impact and with total citations of nearly 3,000. The H index of Dr. Tejwan Singh Kang is 32, which reflect, uh, uh, reflect that he has uh, contributed to a great extent in uh, handled three major research projects and currently two major projects uh, are in uh, run and uh, he has supervised four PhD scholars and currently uh, five scholars has been registered uh, are working with Dr. Tejwan Singh Kang and the uh, major research interest of Dr. Tejwan Singh Kang uh, include molecular self-assembly, ionic liquids, behavior of proteins in aqueous ionic liquid solutions, uh, nanostructure materials using ionic liquids, ionogels, and thermophysical properties and utilization of binary mixtures of ionic liquids, uh, functions of ionic liquids for sustainable energy and microemulsion, etc. So, without taking much time, uh, I don't want to come in between our audience and our uh, today's guest of honor, Dr. Dejan Singh Kang. And I would like to request now Dr. Uh, Kang to uh, proceed with his. Uh, today's lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dean. So, over to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Sandeep and uh, Dr. Atul for nice introduction. I also not take much time, so I'll just directly start with the, uh, my presentation today. I hope the learners will learn uh, quite a few new things, new terms they will come to know, and how the uh, now it is how the technology is being developed by use of ionic liquids, especially in the case of uh, light harvesting using the photocatalytic materials and ion gels. Uh, okay, so today uh, the topic for my talk is uh, ionic liquids for photocatalytic materials and ionogels. So first of all, I would like to uh, introduce what ionic liquids are. So uh, all of us know, uh, this, yeah. So we know that the like uh, generally in uh, graduation or even in the like higher secondary uh, stage, we used we came to know uh, the ionic compounds are solid ones. This, this is the property of ionic compounds. They are the solids having high melting point. But now I am using the term ionic liquids. So what ionic liquids are? So these are again the compounds which are comprised solely of ions without uh, uh, having any neutral species. But they are liquid at at least below 100 degrees Celsius. Some of them are liquid at, uh, uh, at uh, around room temperature. They are called as room temperature ionic liquids. So now the question arises. Uh, what is the reason behind the liquidous nature of these compounds which are otherwise which are ionic in uh, nature okay so contrary to that of the ionic solid so i have given you uh, like few uh, uh, screenshots over there so this is the crystal structure of sodium collide and uh, downwards you can see the heaps of sodium collide okay so this is the table salts which we use to eat on our daily basis okay on the right hand side, you can see the proposed uh, crystal structure for uh, amylazurium based ionic liquids. And below, uh, in the round bottom flask, I have shown a picture of ionic liquid. Okay. Now, you can see clearly differentiate. We have on the both sides, we have ionic compounds, 
but one is solid and another is liquid how it is happening why it is happening basically in the case of uh, ionic compounds such as uh, sodium chloride bromide or we can say iodide in that case the ions are small in size their charge is localized and the crystal packing is highly efficient when the crystal packing as we can see in the 3d view when the crystal packing is when the crystal packing is highly efficient we can see there in that case uh, the lattice energy is very high once the lattice energy becomes very high so it means we need much energy uh, to melt the given compound on the other hand in the case of ionic liquids their lattice enthalpy is very less it's as low as thermal energy present at room temperature that is uh, 3 by 2 kt okay so when the lattice energy is small as compared to energy present at room temperature they become liquid at room temperature so now question arises why their lattice enthalpy is less if we compare the ionic solids and ionic liquids we in the case of ionic liquids the the cation and anion could have large size and they are conformationally flexible okay so when they are asymmetric in nature they cannot uh, pack very well in the crystal structure if there is no good packing it means we need very less amount of energy to make them liquid so that is why these compounds are liquid at room temperature okay so now uh, again thing come into mind why people are using ionic liquids we have so many solvents which we can use like ethanol methanol dcm chloroform and whatever you name there are many solvents organic solvents which we can use for a variety of for performing a variety of chemical reactions yes okay for performing a variety of chemical reactions so what is so important in these ionic liquids okay so they exhibit very unique physical chemical properties which makes them very interesting and suitable candidates for performing variety of chemical reactions for developing a variety of chemical and physical processes to be used in normal labs to be used in industry so i have listed a few of the properties of ionic liquids which have attracted the scientists researchers all around the globe to work in the field of ionic liquids the first one is like they exhibit very high uh, thermal stability the thermal stability is very high it means like once once you heat the ionic liquids up to very high temperature they remain thermally stable i have given you the example this is the uh, graph showing the uh, the graph is this graph is showing tga thermogrammetic uh, analysis for the variety of ionic liquids we can see that many of the ionic liquids like bmm tf2n this is based on uh, base trifluoro uh, amide sulfonyl amide based imidazolid based ionic liquid it remains stable at least up to at least up to 400 degrees celsius this compound is stable so it means these ionic liquids are very thermally stable if you have to carry out certain set of reactions at high temperature we can easily use these compounds as compared to the other solvents which either evaporates into the environment or they gets degraded at high temperature the another interesting property is negligible vapor pressure when we talk about the vapor pressure so most of the organic solvents are volatile in nature they are volatile in nature it means once we use the organic solvents they tend to leach into the environment they tend to evaporate into the environment which we inhale and if we inhale these toxic solvents that is very dangerous for us so in that sense ionic liquids are not volatile they are having a very less uh, negligible vapor pressure i would rather say at room temperature if you are using these ionic liquids at under temp uh, at the normal temperature and pressure condition they would never go to the environment another uh, important property is their conducting nature because the ionic liquids comprise solely of ions they exhibit conductivity they are they they can be used as good conductors they can be used as electrolytes for a variety of applications further we can tune their properties by the choice of cation or anion by uh, uh, putting some uh, functionality 
or by even by mixing the uh, mixing the ionic liquids with other appropriate solvents further we can make some task specific ionic liquids there are many reports where people have prepared the ionic liquid for a particular task okay for a particular action they will be very useful as compared to the other catalyst or other compounds so due to these properties ionic liquids have uh, attracted very uh, vast uh, interest for many applications so these are some of the applications like they are being used uh, as a precursor as solvent as template for the preparation of nanomaterials for carrying out many enzymatic reactions uh, they are used in sensing for biomass treatment recently people are uh, people have people have started the use of ionic liquids uh, for uh, biomass processing the ionic liquids are being used as lubricants they are being used uh, as a vehicles in in drug delivery too so with these examples i would further move towards the nature of ionic liquids how we can fine tune the nature so we can see okay just a minute okay for example i given an example of imidazolium based ionic liquid which is comprised of 1 ethyl 3 methyl imidazolium ketone and chloride is the anion over there so we can see that the one of the nitrogen having the positive charge is appended with just ethyl chain okay so this is the ionic liquid which is solid at room temperature but melts at around 40 45 degrees celsius okay this ionic liquid can be used as electrolyte if now on the other hand if you compare the structure on the left hand side with another ionic liquid 3 dudecyl 1 methyl imidazolium chloride what is the difference the difference is only between the length of alkyl chain however this change in length of alkyl chain has made the compound has transformed the simple ionic liquid which can be used as electrolyte towards the surface active ionic liquid which behaves similar to that of the ketionic surfactant so if we are talking about surfactant such ionic liquids can lower the surface tension of water they can be uh, used as a template for the preparation of nanomaterials they self assemble they forms micelles vesicles or we one can prepare the micro emulsions by using surface active ionic liquids so further this alkyl chain can be fine tuned by putting some functionality over there okay we can tailor made if we append the alkyl chain with amide ester or some other functional group we can modify the uh, properties uh, of the ionic liquid surfactants okay. so uh, how i am progressing with like now i have given you about the idea of ionic liquids what ionic liquids are why they are ionic liquid how interesting their properties are how one can modify the properties of ionic liquid as per our own choice and the ionic liquids can be used as surfactants this is the one aspect of uh, uh, today's talk the another aspect is graphene what graphene is so basically graphene is a single atomic layer of sp2 bonded carbon atoms tightly packed in a two dimensional honeycomb lattice okay so here i have shown you certain structures over there this is just the sp2 bonded carbon atoms six carbon atoms we are packing in the form of a honeycomb like structure so if we fold the graphene it forms the it forms the carbon nanotube so basically graphene is exfoliated from the graphite and it exhibit many unique physico chemical properties such as like its atomic thickness is very low one single layer of graphene a single layer its thickness is about 3.35 angstrom the electron mobility is very high this is about 100 times higher than that obtained in the silicon uh, by the theoretical approximations the another interesting thing of graphene is its very high strength one thing we have to keep in mind the graphene is very uh, uh, is having a very less weight basically if we go with the volume it is having a very high surface area but its weight is very less weighs very less at the same time graphene shows exhibit remarkably high strength so further it also exhibit thermal conductivity because of these properties graphene has been used in a variety of applications in mechanical sensors for oxidation resistant layers for photonic sensors flexible electronics hydrostatic storage 
and recently people have started the use of graphene as a substrate in photocatalysis so that is why i have chosen the graphene to uh, discuss here now the problem where the problem with the graphene is there are many methods which can be used for the exfoliation of graphene from graphite actually you know the graphite graphite is a large number of graphene layers which are stacked by hydrogen bonding interaction between them okay uh, hydrophobic interactions between them now we have to exfoliate the single layer graphene there are many millions of layers you need single or two layer structure that is graphene for that many methods have been developed by the researchers but all of these methods have certain drawbacks certain limitations uh, whether it would be at the uh, at the scale of cost or time temperature tediousness of the process so one of the method which people are using is the surfactant assisted aqueous phase exfoliation of graphene so if we use the surfactant for exfoliation of graphene it means we have to exfoliate the graphene from graphite in aqueous medium by using a surfactant so this is a rather a very uh, green process so now <clears throat> you can come to know what i'm going to talk about today is i will talk about ionic liquids which we are using as templates metal ion precursors or surfactants for exfoliation of graphene in aqueous medium further same ionic liquids have been used and this leads to the uh, preparation of nanomaterials singly in aqueous phase or one can prepare the nanomaterials appended at the surface of graphene so uh, for the again for the bachelor and master students i would remind one thing again i have started with ionic liquids what ionic liquids are so one of the type of ionic liquids is surface active ionic liquids which acts which can act like the surfactant which can lower the surface tension of water which can act as the template or metal ion precursor if we can modify them we have combined the surface active ionic liquids having the metal ion as the precursor with the in situ exfoliation of graphene for the preparation of nano materials and their photocatalytic application here i have given you the few examples which have been reported for surface active ionic liquids till date a variety of ionic liquids which are uh, surface active have been reported based on the midazolium pyridinium pyrrolidinium piperidinium and many more cationic head groups and they are appended with a variety of anions i have listed few anions chloride bromide iodide tetrafluoroborate uh, sulfonate and uh, tosylate etc so these ionic liquids the surface active ionic liquids they undergo self assembly similar to conventional surfactants in aqueous medium in the which can be in the form of li liposomes micelles bilayer sheets elongated micelles or uh, uh, network formation vesicles that all would depend upon the nature of the surface active ionic liquid is constituent ion solvent temperature as well as the additive so as a first example we have synthesized around 2 years back we have synthesized this uh, nicotinium based ionic liquid so we all know the nicotine nicotine comes from the tobacco plant okay so when we transform the nicotine to nicotinium cation and append it with the alkyl chain having the ester functionalization so then with the presence of this ester functional group the ionic liquid behaves much superior to that of the conventional reported surfactants in terms of its critical micelle concentration critical micelle concentration is one of the important uh, characteristic parameter of any surfactant which should be as low as possible so we have compared the critical micelle concentration of the prepared surfactant to that of the many of the reported ionic liquids and surfactants and it was found that the prepared nicotinium based surface active ionic liquid exhibit much lower cmc as compared to the reported ionic liquid surfactants so now where we have used that nicotinium based ionic liquid so first example for photocatalytic activity today i am going to present is is of the case silver silver bromide nanoparticles prepared in aqueous medium or in the presence of graphene so we all know that the silver halides silver chloride bromide or iodide they are catalytically active uh, 
I don't know how many of you have seen the <coughs> old cameras in which we are using the old camera rolls. We, we, we used to call them as negatives. Okay. All those camera rolls were having a layer of silver halide, having some other stabilizing agent such as gelatin and something. Once the light falls on those camera rolls, the silver halide gets uh, reduced over there and you can get the photograph. So these compounds are not very stable. On the other hand, once you append or once we uh, make the composite structure of silver halides in the presence of silver, these are called as silver silver halide nanocomposites, nanoparticles. They are highly catalytically active and photochemically stable. However, When we have to prepare these silver silver halide nanoparticles, it's not very easy. It's very, very tedious process, which were people trying to use. In that case, in the conventional system, what have been reported uh, before the publication of this work, what people used to do is we have to take this, we have to take silver nitrate, and then you have to add NAX, silver halide, into that. And we have to keep the echo solution for 2 to 20 hours so that a crystal of silver halide having excess silver ions in its interstitial sites can be found. Further, when we irradiate this crystal under electron beam in the presence of a variety of chemicals which are called as reductants or stabilizers, one can have silver silver bromide genus nanoparticles. Okay, genus means. Genus means when your nanoparticles have two uh, two faces, we can say. When you see from any of the face, the particle looks similar. So those are those type of particles are called as genus nanoparticles. So in this case, we have seen that you have to add sodium halide from outside. We have to keep the solution for two to twenty hours. So you have lost a lot of time. You have to add certain stabilizers or some reducing agents. Then we need high energy electron beam or dangerous UV light for the photo reduction of silver at the surface of silver halide to get silver silver bromide genus nanoparticles as I have shown you there. Okay. So we need certain set of things where one can easily produce these nanoparticles. In that case what we have done. So one can see in the figure label C over there, we have just taken the silver nitrate echo solution and put the ionic liquid surfactant in that case. So here on the um, in the middle of side one can see the nicotinium based cell we have used. So now one can question you have not used the uh, from where the halide would come. We have not added the sodium halide from outside. Actually the bromide ion which which we have utilized as the counter ion and surface active ionic liquid. So the bromide ion was provided by the surface active ionic liquid for the preparation of nanomaterial. So here one surface active ionic liquid acted as the source of bromide ion, aids in the reduction as well as it acted as the template. So now in the echo silver nitrate you add ionic liquid, shake it, keep the solution under sunlight or visible light just for a single minute, for one minute one can see the formation of nicely placed silver silver bromide genus uh, nanoparticles. So now you can see we have reduced the time from 2 to 20 or to 1 minute. You can reduce the number of chemicals. We have not used the, the silver halide. We have not used the extra stabilizer. We have not used the electron beam. So because all of these uh, credentials, this work was published in Journal of Material Chemistry in 2019. So now the prepared nanoparticles for the uh, student for the crusty of uh, uh, master students I have included certain figures. So the prepared nanoparticles have been characterized by uh, powder XRD pattern. Now in the panel B you can see the transmission electron microscope image of the prepared genus nanoparticles. So these are the dumbbell shaped nanoparticles and out of these nanoparticles one part is having a lower contrast as compared to the another one. So
so then the both uh, the the area uh, giving the both contrast have been further examined uh, <coughs> have been uh, further examined by high resolution transmission electron microscopy where you can see the lattice planes and the the, the distance between the uh, uh, adjacent lattice planes are very specific for the specific material so it is 0.34 nanometer for silver bromide and it's 0.24 nanometer for silver so from this lattice structure we could come to know the area which is showing the lighter contrast this is silver bromide and the silver which is in the darker contrast it is growing from from the silver bromide so that has also been established from the uh, transmission electron microscope images done at some other places so further many studies have been carried out in this aspect we have also uh, explored the how the change in uh, shape of the nanoparticles can take place with the function of time so as uh, in the in the case of one minute we can find the very nicely placed and then as nanoparticles once you increase the time so their structure goes to deteriorating because this silver ions are reduced to much higher extent and you can see here the much of the area is darker in color so further the formation of silver bromide has been established from uh, the raman spectroscopy one can see that in the raman spectroscopy uh, the the band for silver bromide is very much higher for the samples found at 2 minutes of irradiation once we increase the time from 2 minute to 30 and to 2 hours the peak for silver bromide goes on decreasing this shows that the the silver ions gets reduced as you increase the time period further the kinetics of formation of silver nanoparticle silver bromide uh, silver silver bromide gyrus nanoparticles have been established from time dependent uv visible measurements and it was found that approximately after after 30 minutes most of the uh, reduction could take place further the nanoparticles have found to be a uh, very much stable uh, for at least 3 months as proved by the zeta potential measurements there is no change in the surface charge of the uh, nanoparticles which was which have established the uh, colloidal stability of the prepared nanoparticles okay so i will skip this slide so we have also proved the how the the relative content of silver ion and sale affects the uh, uh, morphology of the found nanoparticles or what is the specific role of surface active ionic liquid in the formation of silver silver bromide gyrus nanoparticles it has been found that no silver silver bromide gyrus nanoparticles could form if we take some midazolium based ionic liquid or a conventional surfactant cetyl trimethyl ammonium bromide so it has established that the nicotinium based ionic liquid is very much necessary for the preparation of such nanoparticles so the prepared nanoparticles have been uh, utilized for the photo reduction of rhodamine b one can see that the rhodamine from the absorbance spectra in the panel a the the absorbance for rhodamine b goes on decreasing and it almost vanishes at about 25 minutes of irradiation the important point over there is we have done all this photocatalysis under sunlight one thing we have prepared the nanoparticles under sunlight then we have use these nanoparticles we have used these nanoparticles uh, as the photocatalyst that to under the sunlight so in that case we have compared a variety of variety of silver silver bromide nanoparticles which we have prepared by different using different molar ratio of silver and silver bromide it was found that the nanoparticles which are having a gyrus shape they have shown very high photocatalytic activity further the photocatalytic activity have been found to be very stable for at least five repeated cycles of photocatalysis and further uh, the probable mechanism for the photo degradation of rhodamine b di have been proved not only this the prepared nanoparticles okay so i have skipped that slide okay next then okay that paper was published in uh, journal of material chemistry a in 2019 then we thought why not to use these surface active ionic liquid for exfoliation of graphene from graphite so one can see over there this is the three dimensional structure of graphite we have shown we have 
bath sonic catheter the graphite in the presence of nicotinium based ionic liquid for 2 hours to get few layer thick graphene you can see there few layer thick graphene now the question arises what is the stability of that exfoliated graphene the exfoliated graphene was found to be very stable because the ionic liquid tends to adsorb at the surface of graphene layers so now as we have shown in the last example, we, we just needed silver nitrate and ionic liquid for the preparation of nanoparticles. In this case, we have the graphene that is extra. We have in the echo solution, we have few layered graphene appended with the nicotinium based ionic liquid, which we have earlier used for the preparation of silver silver and nanoparticle. So in this echo solution, we have added the silver nitrate and irradiated the solution under sunlight to obtain genus nanoparticles decorated graphene which we have exploited for the uh, photocatalytic activity not only for the photo reduction of rhodamine b but also for the photo reduction of an antibiotic ciprofloxacin as well as an reduction of 4 nitrophenol to 4 amino uh, phenol so this is the figure showing the exfoliation of uh, graphene so uh, okay i'll skip this then we have found that actually we have to establish that what is the exact concentration of surfactant which we need for the maximum exfoliation of graphene it was found that at around 10 millimole of the concentration when the concentration was uh, very close to 10 millimole here the maximum amount of graphene can be exfoliated and the exfoliated graphene has been found to be very stable in aqueous medium as a function of days. The exfoliated graphene has been characterized by XRD spectra. Here one can see that in the in the first first of the figure. Okay, I will annot annotate it. You can see over there in the case of graphite, it shows very uh, crystalline nature. Uh, and a very uh, high scattering intensity for the peak corresponding to 002 plane and 004 plane. However, when you have exfoliated the graphene, single layer or few layer graphene, its stacking is reduced. One can see that there is no high intensity peak in the case of graphene. That shows the graphene has been exfoliated by the appropriate method. The another interesting feature for the graphene is the presence of inherent defects when we can see the case of graphite in the in the case of graphite this is the uh, raman spectra this is the raman spectra comparing the graphite and graphene you can see i have written over there d and g bands okay so the the band which appears in the raman spectra at around uh, 1385 per centimeter that corresponds to deep D band and in other spectra at around 1600 per centimeter is G band. The ratio of intensity of ID to IG is very important. The ratio of the intensity of the band D to G is very important. The lower is the ratio, lower is the number of defects. You can see in the case of graphene, the, the, the number of number of defects are very less as the id by ig is 0 0.097 this decrease uh, they increase a bit in the case of graphene where the ratio is 0 0.29 but still this ratio is very less as compared to the graphene exfoliated by other methods for other method, methods the defects in the graphene uh, are introduced to a, a large amount and more is the number of defects present in graphene more deterioration to the properties of graphene would take place. So we need lesser number of defects that can be obtained by the, the graphene exfoliated using uh, bath sonication method in the presence of a surfactant. So these are the TAM images. A is the TAM image of graphene, where is high resolution TAM image of graphene uh, in, the, in the middle panel B. Here, uh, interplanar distance of two graphene layers have been found to be 0.34 nanometer that is 3.4 angstrom and the exfoliated graphene has been found to be maximally composed of seven graphene layers the afm image is being shown in the panel c 
the height profile of AFMMAs shows that the mean height of the accelerated graphene is 6.5 nanometer, whereas 48% of the accelerated graphene exhibits size less than 6 nanometer. 6 nanometer means the, the, the average, average thickness of the graphene layer accelerated is between 12 to 15 layers. <clears throat> so, this is again the Raman spectra which shows both the presence of silver silicon genus nanoparticles as well as the presence of D band and G band shows the presence of graphene. This has also been corroborated by uh, transmission electron microscopy where at the surface of graphene you one can see the edges over there we have put the gyro line. These are the edges of graphene at the edge of graphene or sorry at the surface of graphene one can see the silver silicon genus nanoparticles. However, the growth of silver is less in the case of uh, in the case when they are present in the presence of or present at the surface of graphene. Further, the specificity of the presence of silver and silver provide has been confirmed by uh, XPS measurements. So, uh, <clears throat> the prepared catalyst which comprises of graphene as well as silver silver provide genus nanoparticle has been utilized for photo degradation of rhodamine B under sunlight. We can find that we have compared the results with bare silver silver bromide genus nanoparticles. The presence of graphene along with the silver silver bromide genus nanoparticles has led to an increase of 2.7 fold increase in the rate of photo degradation as compared to the bare silver silver bromide genus nanoparticles. In the panel C, we have compared certain photo catalysts which have been earlier utilized for the photo degradation of rhodamine B. We have found that the prepared composite nanomaterial by the aid of uh, surface active ionic liquid it is almost thrice active as compared to many of the reported nanoparticles. Similarly, the antibiotic which comes into the base from the uh, which is the form of a bio base coming out from the hospital or some other uh, uh, institutes and pharmaceutical industries ciproflexin that has been reduced under sunlight again. And here 99% of the degradation of ciproflexin has been obtained uh, within two hours where apparent quantum yield has been found to be quite high in the presence of uh, graphene as compared to the bare silver silver uh, genus nanoparticle. Okay, I'll skip this slide. Uh, another interesting one I've shown you, uh, I'll show you there the preparation of iron oxide nanoparticles at the surface of graphene in a very simple way which have been used again as the photocatalyst. What happens in the conventional way? The conventional method is the Hummer's method for the exfoliation of graphene. In the Hummer's method, we have to use hydrogen sulfate, hydrogen phosphate, KMnO4 and other uh, toxic materials such as hydrogen peroxide for the exfoliation of graphene which generally comes out in the form of graphene oxide. In the next step, we, we use to reduce the graphene to reduce uh, uh, graphene oxide to reduce graphene. In that case, we have to add the iron precursor by a certain hydrothermal uh, treatment method at a very high temperature for a longer time. We can find the alpha fe 3 nanoparticles present at the surface of reduced graphene oxide. Okay, so we can see that so many chemicals, so many large number of steps, high temperature. On the other hand, what we have done, we have used an amidazolium based ionic liquid. Okay, uh, I'll just highlighted. The midazolium based ionic liquid appended with the 16 carbon uh, 16 carbon long chain and FeCl4 as the counter anion. So actually this ionic liquid has acted as the template as well as the precursor for the preparation of iron oxide nanoparticles. So in the first step we have exfoliated the graphene by using basonication using this surface active ionic liquid. After exfoliation, the graphene sheets were, uh, uh, were decorated with the ionic liquid. When the echo solution of graphene having this ionic liquid was put under microwave irradiation for, for 30 minutes for a, uh, for, uh, at 130 degrees Celsius, we have found the formation of spindle shaped alpha Fe203 nanoparticles at the surface of graphene as shown in the uh, diagram F. So, 
I'll skip all these things. This is the general characterization which I have shown you earlier too. Like what is the appropriate concentration of surfactant required, and the characterization like uh, uh, what is the quality of graphene which we have exploited using uh, this cyanic liquid. Here comes the uh, thing. One can see over there the presence of alpha p two or three nanoparticles on the surface of graphene has been established by a XRD as well as Raman spectroscopic. measurements further this has this has also been established with the help of xps measurements the tem uh, micro uh, tem micro uh, tem images have shown the formation of spindle shaped alpha fe2o3 nanoparticles at the surface of graphene where the lattice planes have been uh, where the lattice plane corresponding to alpha fe2o3 nanoparticles have confirmed their presence so the prepared uh, material which i have shown you there here you one can see the graphene sheet and the presence of a large number of alpha p2 nanoparticles on the surface so it, this composite has been used as a photo catalyst again for the photo degradation of another antibiotic which is sulf methoxazole it has been found that sulf more than 95% of the sulf methoxazole have been removed from the aqueous solution within 2 hours of irradiation under visible light the apparent quantum yield when we compare with the graphene and bare alpha fe2 three nanoparticle the prepared nano composite in the presence of graphene have shown highest apparent quantum yield so a mechanism for the how the the reduction how the degradation of sulf methoxazole takes place by using the prepared nano catalyst have been explored by computational studies which have been done by one of my colleague actually i am not a uh, theoretical chemist so i used to take help from uh, my colleagues in the same campus or in other uh, universities institutes to do some uh, theoretical studies okay so by going with the time i'll going i'm going to skip again just i give, give you an example so in the last slide you can see we have used here you can see we have used uh imidazolium based ionic liquid having fecl4 as an ion from here we have extracted the ion we have utilized the fe present over there for the preparation of nanoparticles so similarly we go with the uh, in the another example here we have used here we have used zinc chloride based same imidazolium ionic liquid c c60 mim zinc chloride similar met methodology have been adopted for the the first step was extraction of graphene where the ionic liquid decorates the graphene surface once we added the sodium sulfide and set the solution at room temperature for 30 minutes we have found the decoration of exfoliated graphene sheets with zinc sulfide quantum dots in the first step again i am repeating in the first step we generally used to exfoliate the graphene nano sheets which are being decorated by the template or surface active ionic liquid present over there so from the ionic liquid we were having the zn2 plus and we have added from outside sodium sulfide stirred the solution at room temperature for 30 minutes to have finally graphene decorated with zinc sulfide quantum dots a similar studies like i have shown you earlier have been performed so these are the tem images for graphene from zinc sulfide nanoparticle and the zinc sulfide sorry zinc sulfide quantum dots and the presence of zinc sulfide quantum dots at the surface of graphene sheet have been shown by transmission electron microscopy both the nanoparticles as well as the graphene surface have been characterized by a raman spectroscopy as well as transmission electron uh, microscopy so similar uh, photocatalytic material developed developed being uh, have been used uh, for the photocatalysis of for the photo reduction of rhodamine b and again ciprofloxacin have been tried and this work has been published in nanoscale advances in uh, year 2020 so another example not only the nanoparticles by using the similar methodology we have appended the graphene sheets with uh with the cellulase enzyme so we have prepared some biomimetic systems which can act as the Uh, and which can act as the bio catalyst in the presence of enzymes 
Here, the benzimidazolium based surface ionic liquid, which have been synthesized in my lab, have been used to exfoliate the graphene. And in, when we add the cellulase, that is the enzyme, biocatalyst, that gets appended by a surface interaction. They get that gets absorbed onto the graphene surface. So the enzymatic activity of this cellulase, when present in, on the surface of graphene, have been investigated for the conversion of carboxymethyl cellulose, which have been used as a substrate. It has been found that the cellulase has been found to be much higher active as compared to that found in the buffer. So once you combine the enzyme cellulase with graphene, the combination shows much higher enzymatic activity as compared to that shown by the uh, as compared to that shown by the bare cellulose in the presence of buffer only so the mechanism how it is happening what is happening the how the structure of uh, enzyme is being uh, altered when it is present at the surface of graphene have been explored from fluorescence as well as circular dichromism uh, spectroscopy measurements so uh, another topic i have uh, mentioned in my first of my slide is the ionogels. What what gels are actually? Gels are the material where most of the solvent gets trapped in the polymeric gel network. So in that case, the sol the solvent molecules are not in the in the complete study things. Okay, the solvent molecules remain in motion always, but as a bulk, we can see it's a gel. Like uh, like the kids used to eat a jelly. Okay, in that jelly. The gelatin is being used, and many of people uh, call that jelly as the uh, vegan food, okay, as the vegan food that is the vegetarian. Okay, but what I have read, gelatin originates from the biological sources. Gelatin originates from the non-vegan sources. Okay, so that jelly is, in my view, that is non-veg actually. So we have also tried the gelatin, which is a, a polysaccharide. We can say a protein devoid of any uh, secondary and tertiary structure for the preparation of ionogel. Ionogel means we try to entrap the ionic liquid in the network formed by the gelatin polymeric chains. So what we have done, we have heated the ionic liquid and added the gel gelatin into that at around 60 degrees Celsius. Once you cool, cool the solution, the, the solution becomes gel. One can see in the photographs over there, in the right photographs, it's the gel over there. Okay, so now one can form the gel of gelatin by using water as the solvent. That is called as the hydrogel. I have shown a photograph of uh, uh, hydrogel over there. This one. The second one is the photograph of ionogel. So now the problem was that once you keep the gelatin ionogel in uh, in open atmosphere because gelatin is a biopolymer it used to be degraded by the bacteria present in open air present in the open environment so gel was not stable especially in the presence of bacteria so what can we do for the for making this gel stable we have in situ prepared the silver oxide nanoparticles inside the gel the preparation of silver oxide nanoparticles have been characterized by a variety of techniques and the gels shown in the lower panel, these are the ionogels, means having ionic liquid. One is ionic liquid, second is gelatin, and third one is silver oxide nanoparticles. The silver oxide nanoparticles are very good antimicrobial agents. So nowadays, like you have you might have seen that many of the electric appliances, especially the, the cooling systems, such as fridges, they are coming. In the in the fridge, it has been written that uh, silver coating, silver oxide coating. Okay. So that coating is of silver or silver oxide nanoparticles because the bacterial culture or the bacteria colonies cannot grow at the surface of silver or silver oxide nanoparticles. So the prepared gels have been found to be very stable under open atmosphere for at least the six months. So now because these are the gels and ionic liquid is in continuous motion inside the gel. So because of that, one can use these gels as solid state electrolytes. So we have explored the ionic conductivity of these gels as a function of uh, frequency, as a function of temperature, and it was found that the gels are very good conductors of electricity and can be used as solid state electrolytes. Besides that, to be used as solid state electrolyte, there are uh, 
certain properties which a gel must adhere to in that case the most interesting property we have found in this gel is self healing property self healing means if you cut the gel in two pieces you can see in the panel c and d if you cut the gel in two pieces you combine the gel it self heals within less than a minute it has been happening with the simple inogen the same things happen when the two cut pieces of inogel having sulfoxide nanoparticles have been adhered with each other on the other hand the hydrogel as shown in the panel a it never self heal further the gel gel shows a very good shape memory effect in the column h you can see shape memory effect means the the material remembers its original shape whatever you uh, put a tear and wear to this gel it adopts its original shape in a minute or two minutes so that is the shape memory effect further a gel for the for making very good electrical uh, corrections the this the electrolyte should be adhered to or should be capable to adhere at different surfaces so we have shown that the prepared ion gel were capable to adhere on paper on glass on quartz mica and steel also further the stretchability of gel was quite amazing the gel could be stretched to at least uh, 10 times of its original diameter one can stretch the gel to 10 times of its uh, original diameter so because of all these properties such materials like this is the one material however exhibit exhibit uh, a vast diverse properties i would rather say diverse properties like self healing shape memory effect uh, high conductivity antimicrobial nature so such material should be developed at very low cost so uh, some of my, some of my students are still working on uh, this area okay so uh, this is the structure of gel we have done and we have also proposed a mechanism how the self healing of this gel take place and that work was published in uh, acs uh, engineering and chemistry journal so this slide is uh, uh, not concerned with the today's topic ionic liquid for photocatalytic materials however still it is concerned with the photocatalysis so we generally know about the polythene it's very hard to degrade the polythene there are certain processes for the degradation of polythene such as chemical recycling which includes pyrolysis at very high temperature and pressure we can do mechanical recycling collecting sorting washing and grinding and even after grinding you cannot degrade the polythene fully the the third one is landfilling that is called as incineration so in the landfilling also it takes thousands of years for the polythene to degrade so another things which are being used another materials or microbes which are being used are the genetically modified uh, bacteria which gives to microbial degradation uh, to the polythene however in this case also again a large amount of land is required and it takes 40 to 60 days so we have developed a system comprising zinc chloride and lactic acid and water as deep tactic solvent so here it's important to mention zinc chloride is solid at room temperature lactic acid is solid at room temperature but once you mix lactic acid and zinc chloride in appropriate ratio heat it once up to around 80 or 90 degree celsius for 7 8 hours you cool it down it remains liquid at room temperature so this liquidity arises from the strong intermolecular hydrogen bonding between hydrogen bond donor and hydrogen bond acceptor such as zinc zinc chloride and lactic acid so such solvents are called as deep tactic solvents when when you mix the two uh, solid components and they become liquid at room temperature such solvents by hydrogen bonding interactions these are called as deep tactic solvents they they are, they are, they exhibit the property similar to that of the ionic liquids so we have utilized the deep tactic solvent comprising zinc chloride and lactic acid which absorb the moisture from air so that is why we have also shown the presence of water over there once you put polythene in this deep tactic solvent heat it at 60 degree celsius under visible light as shown in the in the in the middle uh, diagram you can see over there the polythene gets dissolved it not only gets dissolved the polythene gets 
deteriorated to smaller units and functionalized to become more polar the polythene is very hydrophobic in nature so what we have done we have dissolved the polymer and then precipitated out the dissolved material here we can see okay in the last column we can see here so the dissolved material has been regenerated by using water as anti solvent the regenerated material has been characterized it has been found that the regenerated material is having much lower molecular weight as compared to that of the polythene the presence of ester as well as carboxylic functional groups and other polar groups have been established by a variety of techniques on the regenerated products and the presence of such polar groups make the regenerated product soluble in some of the polar solvents such as methanol acetone etc so after the regeneration of this material the water we have evaporated the water and we left with the gas again which have been recycled for the dissolution of polythene again so in this way a very a very simple method have been established for the dissolution and degradation of polythene and uh, to be very frank with you the method is new it's very unique method however the yield of dissolution was quite low we could dissolve only up to 2 to 3% so now we we would we are trying actually how to increase the yield of dissolution and i am hopeful it will take bit time but certainly we will reach 10 to 15% of dissolution of polythene where the solvent can be recycled so it means we will not produce any waste at at, at the same time we would be uh, having the uh, degradation of polythene in a very economical and uh, sustainable manner so these are some of the uh, uh, characterizations which we have made with the native polythene and regenerated material its crystallinity how the melting point as well as crystallinity of the regenerated material has been changed its molecular weight has been uh, uh, have been found out it has been found out that the molecular weight reduces from around uh, 50000 to 2 to 3000 gram per mole and the presence of variety of functional groups have been established by a xps spectroscopic measurement so i'll not go much detail into this work this work has been published two months back in the journal green chemistry uh okay we have also given the mechanism how everything is happening so actually the mechanism in the mechanism we have found that the degradation or and the dissolution and degradation of polythene happens via the photocatalytic way where the the presence of zinc chloride which is a uh, lewis acid initiates the reaction it abstracts the proton from the lactic acid and then by a norris type 1 and norris type 2 reaction the variety of uh, products have been formed in that case so uh, these are some of the other areas which i am working on so my lab is also working on the self assembly of surface active ionic liquids uh, similarly we are using the surface active ionic liquids for uh, uh, the making of gels graphene gels and other gels and their properties again the self assembly of hydrophobically driven self assembly of deoxychloride and imidazolium based surface active ionic liquid has been published in journal of physical chemistry b uh, this work was published uh, last year actually there are certain ionic liquids which are not very stable they are toxic actually so one of them is based on tetrafluoroborate tetra fluoro borate anion because bf4 generally undergoes hydrolysis when present in water so uh, upon hydrolysis it uh, produces toxic hydrogen fluoride which is acidic in nature so most of the researchers tends to uh, not to use such ionic liquids which are hyd hydrolysis prone which are not very stable under normal conditions but we have tried this ionic liquid its hydrolysis for the preparation of amyloid fibril in the absence of any external additive or uh, addition of acid from outside at optimal temperature of 37 degrees celsius and that work has been published in journal green chemistry last year similarly another work okay this is the uh, screenshot for the paper i have shown you gelatin based highly stretchable self filling gel then another area where we are uh, working on is the complexation of ionic liquids or surface active ionic liquids with a variety of 
uh, enzymes, biomolecules, polypeptides, and other uh, set of polymeric materials. So, in the conclusion, I tend to say like a variety of nanomaterial and their composites with graphene can be easily prepared by using surface active ionic liquids, which do many functions. One thing you can exfoliate the graphene under normal conditions. That same surfactant is being used as a template for the preparation of nanomaterial. Same surfactant, cation or anion, has been used as a precursor either of bromide ions or particular uh, ion for the preparation of nanomaterial. The prepared materials shows very good photocatalytic activity under sunlight. That is the most important thing because sunlight is uh, uh, highly abundant. We have to utilize the sunlight for a variety of reactions. So, with, and the simplicity of the process, what we can do in a very simple way, we have to get the uh, things simple, keep it simple, we have to remember always. So, once you can make the things simple and you, get, you can get the same results, which can be achieved by very cumbersome process, then the importance of your work would definitely increase. So, with all this, uh, I'd like to uh, thank DST, CSIR for uh, financial funding to me. So currently two projects, one from DST and one from CSIR is, is uh, being run in my lab. And I'm thankful to Guru Nanak Dev University Amritsar for providing uh, infrastructure facility in terms of uh, many, many of the instruments, equipments under UP grant, FISH grant, SAP grant, Department of Chemistry where I'm working. So without these students, uh, a guide can do nothing. Guide is always whatever he is with the hard work of the students, he can only guide the kids, but they are the ones who do this work. So I'm very much thankful to all this, my students, Gurveer, Gagandeep, Komal, Manveer, uh, Manveer uh, the PLE wife of Manveer is pending with me, maybe in a week or two, she would be like Dr. Manveer Kaur, then Harmandeep, Manpreet, Harjinder Singh, and Kanika. So I hope more of the students would join my group for hard work, they will do hard work over there, they will get rewarded for there and uh, I hope I would be a nice guide to the future and uh, the present students. Thank you. So with this, again, I'm thankful to the, the authorities at the Akal University of Talmandi Sabo, Dr. Sandeep, Dr. Atul, uh, to be my host, to arranging this such a nice uh, webinar. I don't know how many of the students have got the things, how many of you are awakened at the time. But if at least few of you have got the things, really nice few points, even then I'm very much satisfied with that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So uh, any questions, uh, it, these are most welcome. Thank you very much, Dr. Khan. It was really very informative presentation and uh, we really learned a lot of things about the ionic liquid from this presentation, their application to the synthesis of nanomaterials and and the application of synthesized nanomaterials for the degradation of the organic pollutants. It was really very informative. So now the talk is open for questions. And uh, some, uh, I will request students to ask their questions. Some have put on the chat box, but I will request if they can ask them personally also. The first question I'm seeing here from Gurpreet. Gurpreet, can you unmute yourself and ask the question, please? Gurpreet, MSc fourth semester. Please unmute yourself and ask the question. So, okay, so I, I request Gurpreet to may, make a uh, mind to ask the question. So, uh, before that, like one question is there in the chat box. What's the nature of interaction responsible, responsible for holding ionic liquids on graphene surface? So, that's a very nice question. Nice in the sense like you, ha you have thought how the ionic liquids can uh, hold up on the surface of graphene. So basically, uh, majorly two set of interactions, two types of interaction. One is the hydrophobic interaction because graphene is highly hydrophobic. Hydrophobic interactions between the long alkyl chain of the ionic liquid or uh, surface active ionic liquid and the graphene surface, that is the one thing. And another thing is the, the uh, pi pi interaction between the, the, because in the case of graphene, we have a pi electron cloud. And there are pi electron systems in the case of uh, head groups of surfactants. 
so these pi pi interactions as well as hydrophobic interactions between two components are responsible for holding the uh, ionic liquids on the surface of graphene and uh, i hope the student will be satisfied with this another question how ionic liquids uh, are obtained in purified form uh, from the mix before using it as a solvent for different reactions okay so actually uh, ma many of the ionic liquids can be prepared by metathesis metathesis is one type of reaction where there is no no breakage or formation of new bond just the exchange of moieties ions from one compound to another compound okay in that case let's say for example we have a an ionic liquid bm im ph6 one butyl 3 metal methylimidazolium hexafluorophosphate it's hydrophobic in nature if we have to prepare ionic liquid we have to replace the bf4 with the colloid ion we have to keep the ionic liquid in dcm you add the sodium chloride in excess of that what will happen there will be formation of sodium bf4 which will which will stay in one of the solvent and ionic liquid which is the colloid that will go into the polar solvent so you can separate the solvents like uh, uh, you can separate the compound from the solvent by a simple evaporation and prepare the ionic liquid if we go we have to go with the like purification most of the ionic liquids have impure colored impurities basically in the case of colored impurity we can use the charcoal column for the purification of ionic liquids in other cases sometimes like in the case of uh, nicotinium based ionic liquid we have chiral impurities in that case you have to use the column chromatography to purify the ionic liquid but most of the time you can get the uh, highly purified ionic liquids in a single step thank you okay sir i am uh, reading the question of gurpreet also yes, he has asked that as as graphene is decorated uh, by ionic liquid is it possible to uh, able to decorate silica with ionic liquid yes sir it's it's not only the graphene graphene is a 2d material which can be decorated with the the ionic liquids or surfactants similarly a variety of other 2d materials like silica we can even decorate silica tungsten disulfide molybdenum disulfide and a variety of 2d materials are being explored nowadays so my group have worked on graphene we have started working on molybdenum disulfide and tungsten disulfide two of my students is harjinder and kanika they are working on similar projects for nanomaterials at the surface of tungsten disulfide and molybdenum disulfide for photocatalytic applications so in that case we are expecting like in the graphene it was giving you uh, the high surface area and it was aiding in the photocatalysis however there is no direct band gap in the case of graphene when we we are thoughtful that if we use like tungsten disulfide which is having a direct band gap structure that will further enhance the photocatalytic activity of the nanomaterial definitely the the 2d material silica in the form of 2d nanomaterials can be blended with the ionic liquids by hydrophobic interaction thank you sir Bye -bye. and there is another question from jagmeet msc fourth semester yes. sir how ionic liquid helps to increase functionalization between different groups uh, i couldn't get how, how ionic liquids increase the functionalization between different groups i think uh, Uh, yeah actually i i think she she or he could not uh, convey what they want to ask yeah jagmeet if you are uh, online please ask your question uh, please clarify your question bete bolo punjabi ch bolo hindi ch bolo just ask the question what i tell me ha ji fir bhi kuch bolda main i about the functionalization okay so actually for different functionalization we we were not talking about we could functionalize the ionic liquid alkyl chain cationic head group or anion with variety of functional head groups so when you append some functional uh, uh, functional group on the alkyl chain on the or on the head group of surface active ionic liquid its properties can be changed let's say for example like if you append the alkyl chain near the head group of ionic liquid by a amide moiety conh it is having both hydrogen bond donor and hydrogen bond acceptor uh, functional group co and nh in that case definitely the micelle of the surface active ionic liquid would be highly reduced because inter ionic hydrogen bonding interactions 
the atom bonding interaction between the two molecules of cell ion would increase which would lead to the decrease in cnc so i hope uh, you you can get something from that so if you have still further queries if i couldn't answer you you can uh, email me i have given my email id uh, below side of this slide thank you ji yes, sir i think jagmeet you got the answer sir i also have one query please uh, you told that you are using these materials for the degradation of the dyes uh, drug molecules right so i have a question that uh, when you are using like silver based uh, uh, nano materials which are synthesized with the help of ionic liquids as well as graphene based nano materials synthesized with the help of ionic liquids so are you uh, uh, are you removing ionic liquids after synthesizing nano materials and then utilizing them in uh, uh, for the application or as such you are using this we, we, we are moving sir once we synthesize thing we have to centrifuge the things and wash it with the appropriate solvent three or four times then we are using because if the ionic liquid let's say in the example of silver silver bromide if the ionic liquid stays present inside it will further give the bromide ions and uh, can lead to degradation of the uh, photo catalyst yes. so we used to remove all the ionic liquid then we use Oh, thank you, thank you. My pleasure. So, any faculty members, please. I request faculty members to ask their question if they have any uh, question. Okay, uh, if there is no question, then I will pass uh, the stage now to Dr. Sandeep to. For the vote of thanks to our uh, team speaker of today, so, Dr. Sandeep, please. Thank you, Dr. Atul. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Tejan Singh Kang has presented his uh, finding, his research in a very uh, beautiful manner and more. Actually, an understanding uh, way, uh, Doctor uh, Kang. Uh, I have one question also. Uh, first, I will ask. Then I'll uh, say my vote of thanks. Uh, sir, you have used graphene coated uh, uh, graphene as a support for the synthesis of silver and silver bromide uh, nanoparticle, and for the synthesis of zinc sulfide. So, and you have mentioned that uh, these coated graphene coated nanoparticles they were uh, very much efficient uh, in their uh, degradation or removal efficiencies. Uh, as in one slide, you have uh, told that it is uh, a 2.7 times increase in rhodamine B uh, removal efficiency was observed with the graphene coated uh, uh, materials. So, uh, my question was: uh, Is there anything the role the graphene played uh, itself? Uh, like uh, uh, in the degradation process or in the removal process, that means uh, what is the actual role that that graphene has that leads to the significant enhancement in the uh, removal efficiencies of these uh, spotted materials? So uh, actually, green uh, graphene acts in different ways. Like when we compare, like in the in the case of aqua solution, so the we need the adsorption of dye. Or it, the, the the dye to be reduced should come in very close contact with that of the nanoparticle in the aqueous solution. So the chances of dye coming close to that of the nanoparticles increases at the graphene because uh, in my paper we have shown that in the presence of graphene, the appropriate dye or the uh, antibiotic it gets adsorbed at the surface of graphene. So that is why there is the enhanced contact between the nanoparticles. And the molecule to be reduced, which helps in uh, making the process very fast. The second thing, graphene uh, is not having any uh, band gap, but when a variety of nanomaterials they are present at the surface of graphene, there is the opening of band gap of the graphene. By computational studies, we have established the opening of uh, band gap of, gap of graphene. There, here we can see in this case for the case of alpha fe two or three nanoparticles at the surface of. Uh, at the at the surface of graphene so generally from the weakest band of alpha p23 nanoparticles the electron goes to the conduction band leaving behind the holes okay that is the normal process but when this nanoparticle is present at the surface of graphene 
there are certain electrons which also goes from the valence band of graphene to conduction band of alpha p23 nanoparticle this increases the concentration of electrons which are being used for the degradation of products in the conduction band of fe23 this is the other reason for the enhancement in a uh, catalytic efficiency in the presence of graphene thank you dr kajol sir uh, so now i want to present my formal thank uh, i i am uh, feeling a privileged uh, in extending my vote of thanks to dr tejwan singh khan uh, who has enriched the students of our department with his great knowledge and great contribution uh, in the field of ionic liquids uh, i want to uh, brief the uh, contributions or presentations uh, presented the work presented today uh, dr devan singh khan has uh, presented uh, that nicotinium based ionic liquids which were used for the synthesis of silver and silver bromide uh, nano composite materials and uh, they have also uh, prepared graphene coated silver and silver bromide and zinc sulfide nano composites and they use these nano composites for the uh, remediation of uh, rhodamine b and sulfamethyl uh, sulfamethyl uh, like contaminants further he uh, presented his work on the basis of uh, uh, this modification of gels uh, earlier they were neutral but incorporation of ionic liquids into the gels leads to the charge uh, appearance of charge and that help in the tuning of uh, properties of these gel molecules and further he has uh, worked on the dissolution and degradation of polythenes so this uh, uh, this work is very much con uh, significant as it is also evident from the uh high impact publications which dr tejwan singh kang has uh, obtained from this work so dr kang i uh, i must say that your work is very much good and uh, our students have learned more uh, things from you and definitely it will help in the uh, in the shaping of the uh, future research career of our students uh, thank you very much and i also want to thank my management of akal university uh, our Uh, dean research dean academics and our honorable vice chancellor sir for providing us the opportunities to uh, to help us in uh, uh, helping our students to get these kind of platforms and uh, enriching their knowledge so thank you thank you dr kang and uh, it is uh, we can say the uh, uh, in this pandemic area still it is going on uh, we are not able to see you in physical uh, but in future uh, if the conditions will get uh, easy we will request dr kang to uh, visit our university and interact with our students and uh, have more interactions that will uh, help in enriching the knowledge of our students uh, i'm a great fan of you sir dr uh, kang and uh, uh, with these words uh, again i uh, thanks all the participants and all the audience and my dear uh, colleague dr atul and all my faculty colleagues and uh, my team the it team which helped us in uh, arranging all the uh, well this platform zoom platform for making this uh, presentation possible thank you sir thank you thank you, you. it was my pleasure so definitely we shall meet and if i can be of any help to uh, your students to any of the faculty in characterization or in collaboration any sort of the thing i shall be very happy so we have to grow together thank you thank you very much giving me the thank opportunity you. to talk about this thank you sir thank you bye bye thank you sir thank you very much thank you